Good afternoon, good evening, good evening. Thank you guys very much. So I'm really excited. There, you know, when Jeep was coming here to California, the first thing I thought of is it would be so great to bring Camilla and Akai here. They, a few of you have gone through their chronic program. And I followed Camilla's birth and be her first child. She she had her birth, her first child was done by Marion. And I remember hearing or reading that your your iron level was better than the women that were eating. And it just blew my mind. So I'm not gonna say anything else other than welcome Camilla and Kai.
This rule that we measure, how we feel right now, because I already tell you that at the end of this lecture, you're going to feel way better. So I'm asking you this for you to get to know how you feel, so when we finish this, you can recognize the changes. I'm 
traveling to America, and we felt that uh, that we, as human beings, we carry gifts. You know, we are born with gifts. Everybody wants to have a gift to offer to the world, yeah? And in such a moment, in our path, we were able to feel, to connect, to experience that gift that we all carry. In our way, it was art. So we, we were artists, and we were like, we have this talent. Why don't we start giving this to the kids so they can know through all their life that they are artists too and they can have their own power to activate it. Because you know, for me, art is a very powerful energy that can change your life when you put it with your creative force, yeah? So that's how we feel that it will be such a good impact for kids if we can just present them the potential of becoming artists, yeah? By, but by, while doing that, we fall in love with these children, we fall in love with being in service with other people. We fall in love with getting to know shamans, getting to know deep communities in the jungle in which nobody is able to arrive in those places. We're able to be welcome in those places, living with those communities, learning how they see life, learning how they connect with nature, learning how they breathe, learning how they see life from the eyes of the people of the earth. And we were traveling in Bolivia, Machu Picchu and Tiahuanaco in sacred places. They kayak, uh, we, we stay there for several months. And by being in those sacred places, we were able to, to connect with the people of, of the town, the locals, you know, because we were traveling uh, in service, not as tourists. We were just people that were there to give to the community what we had. So when you have something to give, people also welcome you in a different way, and they teach you, and they share with you things that they don't share with other people. Yeah? We were able to learn the legends of Lady Kaka, you know, the legends of Machu Picchu, all this amazing, very hidden knowledge and shamanic knowledge, you know, and all about the dream. What the shamans call the place forever, or the city forever. The place forever because when we breathe, we go back to the source. So it's our place forever, yeah? So we learn to control our breathing slowly, faster. For example, in the, you know, the Temascal, the sweat lodge? You know the Sweat Lodge? Yeah. So when we were in the Sweat Lodge, you know, the first time so we had the amazing shaman that was our teacher. We stayed with him for like two years and a half learning the Sweat Lodge to be able to facilitate Sweat Lodge later. And with him, we learned to breathe, you know, because the Sweat Lodge is so hot, very dark, and sometimes all these fears begin to arise, isn't it? Because it's super hot and you are with different people. And as the ceremony evolves, you begin to feel all these emotions, all these fears arising. So the shaman was there. Breathe, breathe slowly. Face your fears, control your fears with your breathing. Calm down your emotions. So all was about breathing, being there in the sweat you see? So all this connection with the breathing is started by being with the shaman and the kids in the communities and experiencing these sacred rituals that they used to use to be in balance with nature. And in this part of what we discovered all the shamans, you know, the very masters of the for example, the San Pedro cactus, the ayahuasca, sacred medicine that in South America where I come from, uh, Ecuador, is part of our culture. Yeah? So by being there, by really taking those sacred plants from a place of expanding our consciousness, learning more about us, and being with people that uh, has uh, knowledge about uh, how to create the perfect healing process for us, we were able to learn more and more about breathing, and many other amazing stuff that we learned from this journey with the shamans. But all of this was building us towards realizing the Bethlehem process. Because as we begin to give sweat lodges, as we begin to give uh, ceremonies with sacred plants, that is when the Bethlehem process came for us. It came to look for us. Because we were ready to understand what really the connection with source means for the human body. Uh, and that is when we were in our home. We were, at that time in Bolivia, we were building an ecological house for the kids in the town, because that was part of our project. And when we were doing this, there was this lady from Argentina, that she came to us to ask us if we know a place where she can rent, so she can do her 21 day process with the convert there. So she came, you know, to know the door of our house, and we were like, wow, what is that a third thing? She started explaining to us and telling us about it. And right away, I didn't resonate with us because it, it came for us. We were not looking for it. No. 
the king to us because we were just in the, the state to be able to receive that knowledge. Yeah? We had already let go of a lot of things. You know, we were really consciously focused on letting go of all of our baggage, like our emotional baggage, our memories, all of those things that can follow us an entire lifetime and even generations. We were already consciously on that path of refining ourselves.
And things that were so intense at the beginning that we were like, wow, how to stop this, you know? It's too much, You're like, wow, this is too much. <laughs> it was too much at the beginning. And it took us time for us to get to discover and to adapt our body towards that big amount of energy that we're building through the breath. Because the thing is that, you know, with breatharianism, nobody actually talks about the breath, even though the word is comprised of two words about breath and air. But for some reason, the focus has been put so much on not eating, you know? And so when we did our process, there was no focus on breathing or meditating or any sort of anything other than fasting. So we were fasting, dry fasting for seven days, and then little by little, During that time, when we felt like while this process is very big, that we did create each one of us in our own kind of uh, powerful transformative moment that connection to the breath. And from there, yes, we began to grow and it began to evolve. And we saw actual, along with all of the benefits that you just mentioned, a physical healing as well, like real physical rejuvenation of our body. And that was a uh, that moment something really important and uh, valuable to us. Yeah, we really, we really saw the benefits of, of the purification and the breathing taking place in such amazing ways. And, and not only us, we were just so happy, so in love with each other, so clear from all traumas, all the family lineages that were kind of, you know, keeping us attached to our family, all kinds of emotions that were like unhealthy, it was just wrong. Well, just like in a state of bliss, love, source connection. Uh, and that was the beginning of all of this, you know, because it's a state of connection. People can feel it. People can, can tap into it. And that's how we started to teach because people were like, guys, something is happening here. What, what is that that you guys have done? That you guys look so good, uh, your energy is so high, you guys are so happy, what is that? People who knew us and have seen our before and after, they saw that there was something that changed really dramatically before and after that process. Yeah? Uh, so we started to teach, uh, and then right away we began to grow. More and more people began to call us. We were in, in Ecuador and we had our first interview on YouTube. Uh, and then after that, there was an international television channel that put us in a, a TV um, documentary. And that uh, documentary reached all over the world. And from that place, from that moment, people from all over the world started to ask us to contact us so we can begin to teach and give worship the intentions of this kind of community. Also, during that time of understanding the connection to the breath, we did experience this um, natural sort of lightening of our diet, which was unintentional again, but because coming out of the process Yeah? 
and by seeing this, we have seen so much healing through all these years, and we were like, wow, you know, this is actually is about healing. It's not about healing. This is about healing. This amazing process has the potential to heal so much things. So what if we do need to aim towards that now? To bring the journalism towards a new state, which is not about what we think. We do need to repair more of their things, but we can teach to everyone, even if they eat, but we can teach them how they can feel the connection and the benefits of the energy in their bodies right now. So from that day, we begin to teach all over the world how even certified people. And yeah, we have been also broadcasted in all kinds of media outlets uh, in 2016, 17, we were viral. We were in an interview in UK and then went New York Times, CNN, all over the world. And also we have been invited to all kinds of festivals because as I mentioned, our work has grown and has touched thousands of people around the world. See that image is the first video that we did, uh, the first interview that we did uh, years ago. As you see, this has all kinds of translations. We went all over the world. That's how we start translation. And yeah, what is all about? What is our process uh, compared? Uh, exactly. So you know, we're talking about breatharianism. You're getting to know a little bit who we are. We want you to feel that we are. So to get into really the, the bulk of what we do and really the true understanding of what it is that we're talking about, our teachings, our courses are compiled on basically three main fundamentals. So we base our classes, our teachings in these three pillars, breathing, fasting, and the connection with the source energy. So as you all know, the breath is this amazing, powerful, everlasting connection to the source energy. Uh, but the breath also has many, you know, physiological benefits. It can literally improve our immune system, create new healthy red blood cells, it oxygenates the brain. It's the first thing that we do when we are born, right? That's how we take our first breath and that's like our affirmation, you know, we're activating like all of our body systems start to function when we first breath. And so we know that the breath is that primordial connection to life. So the breath is the, the main fundamental, we could say, in our courses. And then comes fasting. So we don't place a huge emphasis on fasting, but for those who are interested, you know, in going beyond the limitations of the body and, you know, breaking down limiting belief systems. And Yes, we invite our clients to experience fasting, but not in the way that people usually fast. To most people, and you can tell me if you agree or not, um, a fast is mostly just like not eating, right? Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's kind of like a state of deprivation almost. You're denying your body of something that you usually do, like eating or drinking. So here, as we combine the breathing with fasting, we actually access an alternate source of energy. So instead of eating, we're learning to breathe and receive our energy through the breath during that time that we are letting other body systems, like the digestive system, relax and reset a bit. And then the third pillar is energy. So we are aware now, you know, of the quantum energy of the prana. All cultures throughout all of time have their own version and you know, definition of life source energy. But we can really purely and directly access that energy when we tap into these other kind of practices like breathing, like fasting, and through that really access these pure codes of quantum energy. So these are the three pillars of how we teach a pranic living or breatharianism in the world. Yeah, so um, basically what we teach in the eight-day process, I don't know if you care about the eight-day process, but what you guys have done the eight-day process here. Does anybody know the eight-day process here? Eight-day process. 
they're practicing for us in the day-to-day process. Oh, okay. So, what we did in the eight-day process, that is a process in which uh, through eight days, we change uh, our way how we nourish. Yeah. In these eight days, the first day, we eat fruits and we drink juices. The second day, we only drink juices. The third, fourth, and fifth day, we are, we are in dry packs. Not eating, not drinking anything at all. Yeah. And then we start to drink in the day six, water, day seven, we drink the juices, and day eight, we provide the food. Yeah. In these eight days, our body experienced a full transformation towards the primary living style. Because in the days of the dry fast, the body that needs to be taught, heal, purify, and heal, destroy all the uh, sick cells. But not only that, also, while the body is uh, wasting and using all the remaining energy that it has uh, stored through its life, in those days of dry fast, the body is using all the remaining energy. And there is a moment in which the body is kind of running out of energy. Yeah? And then the body that is intelligent and is smart is going to begin to look for other sources. Okay, what well, I can get more energy now? It's like internal kind of surviving mode of the body. Yeah? In that, when we hit that spot, the body begins to look for other sources of energy. And then the body remembers prana, remembers the connection Force. And then there is this new establishment that takes place in which the body sees life through the breath. The body sees that the breath is the main way how it can take energy into the nerves, senses, and all functions of the body. Yeah? So that's how the body somehow calibrates towards the connection with the source energy in the chronic process. Yeah? And so, but but this difference is that. In a, in a normal fast, people will begin to feel the pain. They're going to begin to feel uh, the lack of energy, as Camila mentioned, like deprivation of food, you know, all those difficult and kind of uncomfortable symptoms, isn't it? Detox symptoms. But what makes this whole process different is that we use breathing. So while people is fasting, we use the breathing to energize them amplify all their senses, all their chakras to recognize prana. And when the body's like, wow, I'm not eating, but I feel all this energy flowing through me to the breath, like, wow, I feel okay, I feel centered. And the body begins to heal and to understand better how prana works into the body and creating a deeper and lasting connection with it. So this is how the science of breathalism works in the body. Yeah? And of course, to do this, we have to first train our body. We have to overflow over our body of energy. Because you cannot be a Bertolian if your body is lacking energy. To be a Bertolian, you have to be overcharged with energy. You know what I mean? So in our process, what we aim with this breathing and the fasting is to charge the battery of your body. Because for example, people, uh, they have a, when they are born, they have a 100% battery life, yeah? But when people is around 50 years old, their energy, their battery is kind of halfway, isn't it? So there is, you know, uh, illnesses and discomforts that they need to take place in the body because the battery is halfway, it's already been wasted, isn't it? But what we do with this is, is to recharge our body battery again to overflow our body battery again. And when the body battery is overflow, it's all satisfaction. There is no lacking at all. And then you can be prepared because all the time your battery is filled, overflowing, and you are all the time breathing. So you can stabilize your energy in that way because you are now consciously breathing energy to maintain your energy always high, okay? So that's why it's important to do this process in the right way following the right techniques so you can succeed and feel complete and grounded after this process. And we tell you this because we did a different process that was more longer, more complicated, and more even dangerous. And we learned that to do it in the easy way, to not take the hard path, but to be kind with the body and to connect with the breath instead of forcing the body to connect with prana to not eat. Okay? 
know what I mean? So we got another pack that is the bread. So we're stuck. Yeah? So also, you know, part of the reason why our body's battery starts to run low is because we have, you know, maybe certain experiences or traumas that become memories that are really strong for the being, you know, some things that are so difficult that you can't even go there, you know, you, you just block it out in your mind. But those things create through you thoughts and thought cycles and patterns, emotions, that repeat themselves over and over, showing up in experiences and dynamics. And so all of these, you know, life, and it can start to get heavy on a person if you don't know and have the right tools or techniques to be filtering your mind, filtering your emotions, you know, checking in with yourself. Is that thought serving me? Am I, you know, going in the right direction with my life with this thought or these emotions? So being in this sort of a very safe environment of connection to the breath, letting the body rest from the overstimulation of food, because that's another point is that from a very young age, we learn to be emotional eaters. If you honestly reflect in your life, I think most people can say, okay, yeah, I recognize that when I feel upset, I feel sad or angry, I tend to feel hungry actually very soon after that. And so there is this sort of repetitive cycle of the human being that we have labeled necessity that is in fact not necessity. It's a tool to cover up our emotions and not deal with those thoughts or memories that are you know, having this tight grip or tight hold on ourselves. So by giving the body a rest, of that pattern of eating, you know, and covering up emotions day after day, all of those things really have the opportunity to be released. And so that grip, you know, on your mind and that whatever you feel, that control in your mind by those emotions or those memories, that starts to fade away. Because we also have created techniques that go directly to those painful memories that psychotherapists, regular therapy can often not reach. We've seen that over and over again. And those deep-seated traumas, you know, and traumas that maybe not are that maybe are not even from your lifetime, but from your generation's past. You know, there are all of these things from the lineage that affect us in the present. And so, and this powerful combination of the breath and the giving the body a rest through the fasting process also the connection to the source of energy inspires a very profound healing process. And so beyond anything, this is about healing so that we can get back to that just clear and clean authenticity that we are. And so beyond the end goal being not eating or achieving being a vegetarian, this is about healing and coming back to our true nature and connecting us Natural for us. And what you were mentioning about how uh, people lose energy and it's about also all those emotions, the thoughts, if you have overwhelming thoughts, overwhelming emotions, they begin to drain your energy. You know what I mean? Because sometimes you begin to think about something that happened in the past and all those emotions begin to repeat in your being and they need to drain your, your energy. You know what I mean? And if you live in that kind of uh, traumatic or stressful life, your energy is going to be drained once again and once again. And that's why a lot of the work uh, and healing is going to take place. Yeah? So with this work, we are able to reload, re-satisfy, re our emotions with love. You know, because the breath is love. And we all know that the more we breathe, we feel this clearing, this purification in our face. I know that we got started a little bit late. I was also just checking my watch. Um, so technically right now is seven. <laughs> um, but we did start kind of late, so we do have some things that we want to share with you practically so that you can, yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of things yeah, that this we is want to
we're going to use our body as a dynamo. Do you know what is a dynamo? Yeah. For example, those flashlights that you have to spin the handle to make it brighter, isn't it? The same is going to happen with our bodies in this period, yeah? But how we make it uh, happen is by allowing the clash of photons, the clash of particles of light. This is something important. The air has temperature. When you inhale, the air is cold, isn't it? And then the, the air gets inside of you, and then when you exhale, the air is hot, isn't it? So there is two kinds of energies in every breath of the day. Cold energy and hot energy. Cold when you inhale, hot when you exhale, isn't it? But there is a moment in which the hot clash with the cold. You see, the hot air is clashing with the cold air. You gotta exhale hot air, and then you make the hot air clash with the cold air. And you know what happens when there's a clash, isn't it? In every clash, this energy being created, isn't it? When two things come together in a clash, there is an explosion that generates energy, yeah? So the same happens in this brain technique. We allow for the hot air, to get the cold air, and we go faster and faster. For this clash to go, you got it? And the energy to grow, 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 grow. That's the big thing. So we're not hyperventilating. That's no. something that we should. This is very controlled. That's the difference. Also, it is controlled. You are in control of experience. And you're going to do it until when you feel satisfied, when you feel complete, when you feel the pulsing in your body, you feel the connection, the expansion. That's it. You don't need to overdo it. Just only when you feel complete, expand. You got it? So let's do this, and after this, I'll teach you another thing that is also amazing, yeah? Yeah, So remember the, the key thing, you exhale 90%, and then inhale again. So you, you inhale again before you finish the exhalation. You see what I'm saying? And before I finish, I inhale again, so the hot air clash with the cold air. You got it? So we're going to go slow first, and then we're going to accelerate. And I invite you to follow my rhythm, okay? So let's start. In three, two, one. Let's begin breathing through the mouth. And slowly expanding our lungs, expanding our chest. Make your lungs bigger. And now prepare to accelerate. And when you feel ready, you're going to inhale deep and fast. Before you finish the exhalation, we are going to accelerate faster and faster. Starting now.
Very good. Now that we have only one time, when you be ready, go back to breathing naturally. Notice your breathing, maybe there is deepness, maybe there is a better rhythm in your breathing now. Now that you have experienced it one time, let's do it for a second time. But this time with more confidence, because now you know how it is, you know how it feels. So let's do it one more time, but this time all the way. You got it? <laughs> so, let's begin again breathing slowly. And we go faster and faster. When you do it. So let's start. Three, two, one. First is slow. Making your lungs big so you can take bigger quantities of energy. When you feel complete, when you feel boosted with energy, then you feel sad. And stop breathing for as long as you want. very peaceful, very expanded energy. 